Hey everyone, welcome. If you could please rename yourselves um, to include the organization that you represent, that would be terrific. Including your name. We'll get started in a few minutes. All right, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for your interest in this grant program. Excited to see um, some familiar and some new names here on uh, this Zoom meeting. Uh, first of all, I just wanna let everyone know that I had a request to record the meeting. So we are being recorded. If you do not want to be included um, in the recording, then feel free to jump off and um, view it at a later time. We'll post the recording to the, uh, the webpage on our site. Um, sometime in the next day or two. If you haven't already done so, if you could rename yourselves to include uh, the organization that you're representing after, after your name, that would be terrific. Um, Sydney, my colleague, is going to be taking notes, uh, to jotting down the questions and answers uh, that you all ask today, which will be added to the webpage so folks can look back so you don't need to... Um, Make you don't need to take lots of notes. Sydney will do that for us. Um, if there are questions that I don't have the answer to today, I will let you know that, and we'll work to get the answer um, in the next couple of days. And and again, the the answer will be listed um, on the document on the web page. Um, what else? Uh, so I. Um, after today's session, if anyone has any questions about this grant program, um, I have list. We have listed uh, a colleague of of mine, Melissa Berlin, who's also on this um, on this Zoom meeting, as the contact for questions. Questions need to be submitted by email, so please do not call. Um, Melissa is bopping around to different sites, so she might, if you do call, uh, there's a chance that you will not hear back from her um, as quickly as you need to. So please, please send emails with your questions. Uh, feel free to copy me on emails. I do want to let you all know that I am I'm going to be out of the office starting this Friday and all of next week, so you will not get a response from me. Uh, be sure to send your questions to Melissa, please. Um, thanks everyone for, for dropping information in the chat. For those of you who just, uh, just joined us, I did request that, that folks rename themselves to include at the end of your name, um, the organization that you're representing. It's, it's great to see who, who's on this meeting, um, and who's interested in the program. It's helpful for us. So I, I don't have a lot to present to you today. Um, you know, hopefully we've, we've listed as much, you know, listed the information that's most useful in uh, the document itself. Uh, but I do want to just 
highlight a couple of things and then I'll stop talking and welcome any and all questions that you have. Uh, one, one note is um, that I did not mark every question on the application as required. And that was just so, um, it's mostly the, the, the fiscal information. That does not mean that it's not required. So consider every question a required question whether or not it's marked that way on the Google form, okay? Um, obviously, if you are using a fiscal sponsor, then there's a section that um, is specifically for fiscal sponsors. If you don't have a fiscal sponsor, you will not be responding to those questions um, because you're not a fiscal sponsor. Uh, another note, uh, there is a budget. So, so when you look at the application form, hopefully you've all had a chance to, to click on the Google form and uh, take a look at it and, and read the, the introduction and sort of the purpose of the grant um, and uh, any additional information that's listed there. I do want to note that there is a document in that first section of the Google form, and it is a worksheet. It is the application in a Google Doc so that you can fill out all of your questions uh, and then plot them into the Google Form application. So be sure to do that. Um, that'll give you a, a good sense of the full application, give you um, sort of the space to, to fill things out uh, and look at the, whole, the, the application as a whole. So, so please do use that. You do not need to submit that worksheet to us. That's really just for you, um, you to use and uh, complete, that, complete the questions that you'll then transfer over to the, the Google form application. Um, let's see, uh, there is a budget template included in the, uh, the application that is required. So I know sometimes folks use, like to use their own budget templates for this grant, uh, we are requiring that template that we have provided to you. So please be sure to take a look at that. Um, I would say, you know, don't wait till the last minute to look at that document and start working on it. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions about it uh, ahead of time so that we can can support you in completing it. But make sure that you're you're completing that that document. Um, just a note um, about one second. Pull that up, so I'm giving you the right information. Yep, okay. So in that document, you'll see that uh, the budget can include up to 10% for indirect uh, or administrative costs. So uh, just a note there that your cap is 10% on indirect costs to include in the budget. Um, and there is a note on that document and the, um, and on the worksheet to just make a copy of it to um, to write in it. I don't know, I don't think the documents should be locked. So you shouldn't be able to, to make um, edits in the, the documents that we, we shared with you. Um, but if for some reason that's, you know, you, you are able to make edits directly in those documents, please don't um, make sure you make a copy of those documents for yourself so that you can write in them. Um, all right, so I think those are those are the uh, the points that I wanted to make sure that I made up front. But um, just uh, if you haven't had a chance to look at the purpose of this grant uh, program, please do take a look. Our grant priorities are expanding programming for older adults in underserved communities, serving new consumers who are not already being served by an existing program offered by the applicants organization and building the capacity of new programs or projects that started in the last 12 months. Um, so so our, our real, our underlying goal here is to expand programming to older adults across the city. And what we really want to see is, uh, you know, what are, need, what are the needs in your communities and um, how, how are you thinking about addressing them and, uh, and filling any gaps in services in your communities. So we are really looking forward to seeing all of your applications and, um, and 
and a wonderful uh, grant year. So I will stop talking and uh, welcome questions that, that folks have. Please feel free to just come off mute. You don't need to raise your hand um, and also drop questions in the chat. Melissa Berlin, if you wouldn't mind keeping an eye on the chat for any questions and reading them aloud, that would be terrific. Yeah, um, if I if I could start us off, I actually have three questions. So um, as you know, we're um, ABCD. So would it be like the three B applications? Would it be okay for two ABCD sites to potentially submit two applications? Yep. So we are looking for uh, a single application per kind of program or project, or let's get, let's call it a project. Um, so you might have a, you know, an organization that has a single project that um, that exists at two different sites, um, but it is it's it's one project. It's doing the same thing. It's using the same staff. So that would be one application. If you have uh, one organization that has different sites, and each site would like to apply for for these funds to deliver different projects. Each site will have its own project budget, each site will have its own staff, then that would be two different uh, applications. And if we were to be lucky enough to be awarded something, um, would could both applications be considered at the full amount, if I'm making sense? Because if you're, if, if you're, um, would there be more than one grant award at the same amount if both were potentially funded? Um, Potentially, I would say that the um, we w w what our plan is is to look at each application individually. We'll have multiple reviewers looking at each at each application and assessing each program as or each project as a standalone project. Okay, so perfect. I can't you know I can't really speak too much to whether or not um, a project will be funded in full or if it will be funded at all. It will really depend on the project and kind of. Um, what we see is as sort of needs across the across the city. Okay, and then just two quick sub questions, and then I'll um, um, we can move on from my questions. Um, so, would you again, if it's new services and new consum consumers, would food be an allowable expense, or any um, if we were to pay for an arts and crafts, um, you know, from an outside um, consultant, would those be considered? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. If you can, you know, make a case for how those items are addressing the priorities of this program, um, okay. I think you know. Again, we'll be looking at these projects holistically, and and the challenge is always to sort of from from your from your chair to to make the case for how um, each line in the in the budget is really serving um, the purpose of of the project. Okay, and then my absolutely last question, thank you guys so much, is um, I'm just trying to, and this may not be known yet, but in terms of invoice and reporting, will it merit 3B um, invoicing and reporting for documenting expenses, or is that not known yet, quite yet? Uh, no, it will not be like 3B invoicing and reporting. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. This is all very helpful, and I'll make sure I um, share it with my colleagues. Much appreciated. Great. Thanks, Joanna. I'm going to jump in with a question from the chat. So Cynthia Wilkerson said, it sounds as though creating connections recipients are welcome to apply for this opportunity for essentially a second year of funding. Is that accurate? That is accurate. Other questions? Hi, Kathy Lafferty with the South Boston Neighborhood House. Um, I just had a question about the invoice and reporting then, if it's not going to mirror Title III B as it is now, can you talk a little bit about what that might look like? Yeah, so invoicing is um, different for grants and um, Title III invoicing is like, for those of you who don't know, is incredibly specific. Um, receipts are submitted, every dollar needs to be accounted for, and um, and those uh, those invoices are submitted monthly. 
Uh, so, so this is, or quarterly, depending on the program. Uh, so with a, with a grant, we are looking at, um, depending on the size of the grant, one to two invoices. Um, and those invoices will reflect what your, um, what your uh, project entails. So they'll, they'll ref reflect your budget and um, they will be, because a grant is, is with Title III, uh, funds are, are um, it's a reimbursement process. So you need to have done the work and spent the money for the program and then get reimbursed for it. Grants are not like that, or this grant is not like that. So um, you'll submit an invoice and then we'll we'll cut a check. So uh, with your first round of documents, as you, you know, complete your your grant agreement and any other uh, documentation that we need from you, we're going to ask you for an invoice. Um, and again, that will depend. The number of invoices de will depend on the size of the grant. So, for example, if it's a ten thousand dollar grant that an organization receives, you'll submit an invoice to us uh, right at the start, and we'll um, we'll send a check. Um, if it's a $20,000 grant, we have to split up the, um, the funding into two, two different checks. So we'll ask for um, an invoice at the start, and then in a couple months, we'll ask for a second invoice. And I'll, I will I'll share more specific details on that process um, when we make, uh, make our grants. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a couple more questions in the in the chat. Great. David Ehrenstein asked, our organization is all about creating connect, creating community connections. So can we apply as an organization or do we need to have a specific project for this grant? Uh, we are looking for specific projects. So um, we, we are not just kind of funding the operations of, a, uh, of an organization here with this grant. We are we are looking to fund specific projects that uh, that satisfy the, the grant priorities. And then Kelly asked a similar question. Can resources be used for engagement activities to help shape or reshape programs, particularly to connect with people in new communities? Uh, yes, so, so one of the grant priorities, as I shared, is serving new consumers who are not already being served by an existing program offered by the applicant's organization. So uh, if there is a community that you see as um, having a need for services, it's possible that you're already delivering certain services, some or all of those services, uh, but you are kind of branching out and developing a strategic plan to, to reach a new community um, and need funding to support that project. So we would consider that as a, as a project. Good questions, everyone. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, good morning, Allison and everyone. This is Nancy from the Community Healing Center Project. Um, very excited about this opportunity. Um, given that one of your priorities is to increase capacity, uh, we were wondering whether training for some of our project staff to deliver, uh, for instance, in our case, we offer different healing modalities to seniors in the East Boston neighborhood. So um, we've been approached by a potential partner to be trained in trauma-informed yoga that would be appropriate for seniors of all physical abilities. And um, we're thinking of including that in our proposal. Does that qualify? Nancy, that's a good question. And I um, don't have a good answer for you right now. Let me uh, touch base with my team and um, and respond to that to see if, if training would be an appropriate expense. Thank you. And maybe this is an unrelated question, um, but one that my team has been discussing <laughs> for the past couple of months, and that is whether or not we can provide services to seniors' residences that are privately owned. Um, they're low-income seniors, um, underserved seniors, but they're, um, yeah, they are living in facilities uh, where 
I guess, theoretically, <laughs> that, you know, they should be allocating funds to provide these kinds of supports, but for whatever reason are not. I mean, what, what is your view, uh, you know, at Age Strong about that? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the, we, I would say if a, if a project in includes that population of consumers and serving that population of consumers, then then that is an appropriate um, group of people to serve. Um, we we don't, I mean, at Age Strong, we don't uh, generally turn people away from services. Uh, you know, certainly if if a project has um, has a targeted group, then then we'd like to see that group targeted, but. Um, you know, certainly if there are individuals who need services who are older adults and um, especially those who are, are low, low income and uh, have limited access to support and services, then, um, you know, we, we want to serve them. Okay, thank you for that clarification. And we've got another question from here, maybe a couple. Uh, could funding be used to print materials in another language? Um, I would say if those materials are directly related to this project that you are proposing, um, then yes, you know, certainly outreach is an important part of, um, of getting a program up and running, of accessing um, different communities and serving different, different consumers. So um, print materials in different languages would be a, an allowable um, expense, I would say, you know, if you're, if you're um, just applying for a grant um, for just print materials, we would probably be looking for um, something more than that in, in this project. And, um, but certainly if it's, if it's a part of the, if it's the pro part of the project, and, and again, if it's an expense that is um, directly tied to to the work and the grant priorities, then um, I think there's certainly a justification for it. And then we just applied for another Age Strong grant program earlier this month, similar to this. Would we be precluded from this grant program? Um, I assume that you're talking about the behavioral health uh, grant. And um, nope, we are, we are, again, we are looking at um, each application as a standalone application. We, um, we would, you know, welcome anyone who is anyone and everyone who is interested in this grant program to to submit an application. Other questions? Um. All right, so if, if folks have other questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat or come off mute. Uh, just a couple of other quick things that I want to make sure that you all know. Uh, a reminder that the, the closing date and time for this application will be 9 a.m. on Monday, May 1st. And uh, I strongly urge you to submit your applications in advance of that deadline. Um, sometimes people have technical, technical issues, uh, you know, we are, our offices don't technically open until nine. So if you, if you try giving us a call 20, 20 to nine, it is likely you will, you won't get an answer. So um, I strongly urge you to, to submit applications before that. Um, if you submit an application by the deadline, but um, for whatever reason, you're not getting a, a confirmation and it seems like there might be an issue with, with us getting your application by 9 a.m., um, take a screenshot, or I would actually encourage anyone to, and everyone to take a screenshot. I think when you submit your application, there's a screen that comes up like thanking you, acknowledging that you've submitted an application and thanking you. Um, take a screenshot of your screen that includes the timestamp on the bottom and that screen, just so if there is any issue and we have to follow up with you to, to check in about the date or time that it was submitted, uh, you can just shoot that over to us. Um, that would be really helpful. Uh, again, all questions should be emailed, um, emailed to, to Melissa Berlin. Um, 
uh, a reminder that to those who don't know that um, because we're in this sort of open grant period, we we aren't able to necessarily give you specific answers to very specific questions. Um, some of my responses today, as you will have probably observed, are, are more broad uh, and and um, general, and, and I can't, you know, confirm certain things uh, like, yes, we will absolutely um, fund this expense or, or no, we will not, because it really depends on the on the application and the um, and your explanation for things. Uh, if, if you ask questions, you know, just be prepared to get um, sometimes questions, uh, sometimes responses that are not um, super, super specific. And that is because we can't really inform you um, on specific aspects of, of an application and a project since um, we need to post Q&A to everybody and, and make sure that our responses are, are general enough for, for the whole group. So just a heads up on that. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. Um, the grant period is June 1st to May 31st. So it's a one year grant period. Uh, we anticipate ranges in grants from 10,000 to 20,000. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Keep an eye on the uh, the web page, uh, the city web page that we have the, the information listed for this grant on for updates, uh, specifically question and answer document updates. Um, we'll keep, we'll, over the next uh, several days, we'll post this this document that has questions and answers, and uh, it can be a good reference. Multiple people often have the same questions, so good to check back there um, periodically. I see a question in the chat. If our project involves transportation, is that an allowable expense? Uh, yes, transportation uh, would be considered an allowable expense. Expense again, um, depending on how how it's directly tied to the project and achieving um, the priorities uh, of this grant. Any other questions before we conclude? I guess I'll ask one. I'm Davi with the. Uh... East Boston Community Healing Center project, again, echo others in appreciating this opportunity. If we were unable to get our grant in for this cycle since May 1st is coming up fairly soon, do you know when the next um, you know, round of funding might be available or the next cycle would be starting? Um, so so this is not a, though it may seem like we do this every year because we uh, had a creating connections grant last year that's pretty similar to this. Um, this is not something that we traditionally do on an annual basis. So um, I would I would say, you know, don't plan for another round of these funds. Uh, you know, it's always our goal to be um, supporting programming and building new partnerships but that can change from year to year and, and can look different um, depending on what our budget is and uh, what the needs of the community are. So I can't, I can't really give you an answer on that. Um, I also will say that this, this round of funding, you know, this grant program, this was not something that was, has been long planned. Um, and sometimes we um, and sometimes we have grant programs like this that um, we are able to able to offer that have not been you know planned for for years or months. Um, so it really depends. Uh, but yes, I would say if you are interested in in this this grant program and these funds, then um, do your best to submit an application by the first. And um, of course, as other opportunities come up, whether through the Age Strong Commission or, or other departments or, or anywhere, um, we will we'll share them with, with folks and um, try to get the word out as best we can. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, David, yes, we can post the link to the webpage. Um, 
let me let me include that and melissa if you could drop your email address into the chat that would be great um and again melissa's email is uh, is listed on the grant application on the web page and um, in the worksheet. Just give me one second. All right, any other questions? So again, if folks have, have additional questions or follow-up questions, or you get off of this and realize that I didn't actually answer your question um, or answer it to, to your satisfaction, please do follow up with us. Uh, oh. Video. Uh, please do follow up with us with an email to Melissa Berlin. Um, you're again, you're welcome to copy me. You don't need to copy me. Melissa will be uh, sort of the, the main point of communication. So she'll, she and I'll touch base um, regularly and um, yeah, uh, send them along and, and we'll make sure that we get an answer to you and we'll get them posted. And again, that one question that was asked that I didn't have an answer to, um, please keep an eye on the uh, web page for an updated Q and A document, and I will have the answer for you listed in there. Thank you all so much again for your interest and for for making time to um, to be on this Q and A session, and really looking forward to seeing applications come in for this program. Thank you.